A new report from The Atlantic says that China has interned one million Muslims, that they're treating Islam like a mental illness, with some quotes calling it a psychological disease that must be stopped from spreading. Now, some people describe these concentration camps as hospitals or re-education centers. But regardless, there are people being detained by the government because of their religion. And China's never been a shining example of free thought and liberal culture. They even have a word for social justice warrior, which they call baitswa, which literally translates to white left. And there have been many controversies with China where, well, for one, there was a racist commercial where they put a black man in a washing machine and he came out as Chinese. They really don't care about their views and they have a very strong monoculture to an extent. So a lot of people are concerned now as to how China is treating Muslims to the extent that they're calling upon Donald Trump to issue sanctions on China to prevent or stop this behavior. Which is also interesting when you realize that there are many people who don't like Trump, many people on the left, who are saying that Trump's actions on trade with his other countries is going to result in a trade war that can be very bad. So let's take a look at exactly what China is doing to their Muslim population and how they view them and how this translates to Donald Trump and the culture war in the United States. The story from The Atlantic, China is treating Islam like a mental illness. The country is putting Muslims in internment camps and causing real psychological damage in the process. One million Muslims are being held right now in Chinese internment camps, according to estimates cited by the UN and US officials. Former inmates, most of whom are Uyghurs, a largely Muslim ethnic minority, have told reporters that over the course of an indoctrination process lasting several months, they were forced to renounce Islam, criticize their own Islamic beliefs and those of fellow inmates, and recite Communist Party propaganda songs for hours each day. There are media reports of inmates being forced to eat pork and drink alcohol, which are forbidden to Muslims, as well as reports of torture and death. The sheer scale of the internment camp system, which according to the Wall Street Journal has doubled in China's northwest Xinjiang region just within the last year is mind boggling. The US Congressional Executive Commission on China describes it as the largest mass incarceration of a minority population in the world today. Beijing began by targeting Uyghur extremists, but now even benign manifestations of Muslim identity, like growing a long beard, can get a Uyghur sent to a camp, the journal noted. Earlier this month, when a UN panel confronted a senior Chinese official about the camps, he said there are no such things as re-education centers, even though government documents refer to the facilities that way. Instead, he claimed they're just vocational schools for criminals. According to an official Communist Party audio recording, members of the public who have been chosen for re-education have been infected by an ideological illness. They have been infected with religious extremism and violent terrorist ideology, and therefore they must seek treatment from a hospital as an inpatient. The religious extremist ideology is a type of poisonous medicine which confuses the mind of people. If we do not eradicate religious extremism at its roots, the violent terrorist incidents will grow and spread all over like an incurable malignant tumor. The Atlantic says, here's how the Communist Party recording cited above explains this while alluding to the threat of contagion. There is always a risk that the illness will manifest itself at any moment, which would cause serious harm to the public. That is why they must be admitted to a re-education hospital in time to treat and cleanse the virus from their brain and restore their normal mind. Being infected by religious extremism and violent terrorist ideology and not seeking treatment is like being infected by a disease that has not been treated in time, or like taking toxic drugs. There is no guarantee that it will not trigger and affect you in the future. Having gone through re-education and recovered from the ideological disease doesn't mean that one is permanently cured. So after completing the re-education process in the hospital and returning home, they must remain vigilant, empower themselves with the correct knowledge, strengthen their ideological studies, and actively attend various public activities to bolster their immune system. The idea that the government would take you away and force you to engage in behaviors against your will and tell you you're crazy is terrifying because it doesn't have to be Islam. It can be literally anything. You might end up, you might find yourself as someone, as a proponent of libertarian values of freedom and liberty. And if that goes against the party's wishes, it's possible they do this to you at some point. It's possible that those who would support freedom and free expression will be told that they also have a mental disease. I don't know what China will do in the future, but I'm speaking at core principles. That when you allow a government to do something like this, be it our own or someone else, it's only a matter of time before they take any form of dissent and say that you are a problematic individual. And the reason I bring this up is, 
It's possible we could face something like this in our own country at some point, as ideology does spread, and more and more people feel that free speech should not be permitted. In response to this news, Trump is being urged to sanction China over its crackdown on Muslims. A group of US lawmakers has urged President Donald Trump's administration to impose sanctions, including asset freezes and visa bans, on Chinese officials and companies allegedly tied to a stifling security crackdown and the mass internment of ethnic minority Muslims in camps in a far western region. The lawmaker sent a letter to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin urging the government to apply sanctions to address the ongoing human rights crisis in the region of Xinjiang. China's foreign ministry dismissed the criticism, urging the U.S. lawmakers to focus on their job. The U.S. has no right to criticize China on this issue, to be a judge in this regard. Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying said Thursday, according to French news agency AFP, these lawmakers are receiving money from the American taxpayer. They should focus on their job instead of trying to poke their nose in the business of other countries, trying to be the judge of human rights and even threatening to impose unreasonable sanctions on other countries. China insists tough measures are needed as part of a people's war on terror to purge separatist and religious extremist elements from Xinjiang, a vast region with more than 10 million Muslims. Deadly ethnic riots in the capital in 2009 killed hundreds and sporadic violence occurred in subsequent years. But reports of violence are increasingly rare, and the existence of an effective organized resistance to China rule is widely doubted. Now, of course, China would deny any wrongdoing. Of course, they're going to claim this is about the war on terror and fighting extremism. The U.S. would do the exact same thing. But we do have safeguards in this country to prevent this kind of thing from happening, and we've seen this kind of behavior in the past. We've, the U.S. has engaged in similar practices for somewhat different reasons, right? It was a time of war. But look at what happened with the family separation at the border. Very quickly, a judge overturned the ability of law enforcement to do this, and now they have to reunite these families. So that's what's great about liberal democracy. But I can't say I really do understand what's going on in this region of China because I've never been there and I don't know a whole lot about it. But it got me thinking, how would China respond to, say, social justice ideology or the regressive left? I'd have to imagine that they would treat it very similarly. So. I consulted Quora and looked to the response from somebody who actually lives in China. This question, what do the Chinese think of SJWs? And it was responded to in May by a man who says he lived in Beijing since October 2010. He starts by saying, an SJW is a radicalized and more dangerous extremist version of people the Chinese call Baitsua, white left, white people with a liberal leaning political orientation. Many Chinese are not fans with Baitsua, but tolerate them in China so long as they do not instigate SJW rebellions. Besides, Chinese police officers do not hold tolerant views of SJW activities, so any SJWs funded by Western-backed NGOs are strongly advised not to take to the streets to launch violence and mayhem with their Antifa cronies when visiting China. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because it does relate to the Muslim issue. In this core post, he says, many Chinese, especially young people, may show sympathies with Baitswa values, but only if such principles cause no conflicts to themselves, for example, my wife, a Chinese native, a few years ago had expressed concerns over the plight of Muslim refugees from war-torn regions. She expressed her heartbreaking sadness about how the EU faces grave challenges to welcome such people into their countries and criticized U.S. president for pledging support for a so-called Muslim ban when he was campaigning for the White House in 2016. But I asked her, do you support China welcoming these refugees into your country? She said, no way, they are terrorists any country crazy enough to invite them should suffer the consequences. And this is just one instance of one individual on the internet giving their point of view, and it's impossible to fact check. I don't know who this guy is, but I thought it would be interesting to at least read this post to see what the mainstream view on these leftist ideologies and their support of Islam would be. Because it sounds like, I mean, as we know, China is not very tolerant of thoughts that deviate from social norm and they're relatively strict, and they're extremely racist, as we've seen in the past. But I can't say that I'm surprised to see that, according to CBS News, the letter, the call for sanctions on China, was signed by a bipartisan group of senators and congressmen, including Ted Cruz and Sherrod Brown. Because even if you are concerned with Islamic extremism, or right-wing extremism, or Christians and their voting habits, or just fundamentalist religious folk in general, we in America have a culture of tolerance for people's religious beliefs. Our country was built upon it. We have a First Amendment that respects the right of individuals to practice their religion as they see fit. We do need to be concerned about terror and extremism, but we should separate terror and extremism from people who just practice a religion. 
Obviously, there are instances where religious extremism has that overlap, but we really should separate those who might be crazy and aggressive and violent from those who just want to, you know, every Sunday or once a week go and pray and practice as they see fit, maybe not eat certain foods, maybe not wear certain clothes, but so long as they aren't harming others, we should respect their right to do so. So seeing China engage in this behavior to us in America is probably alarming. But at the same time, I don't know if the U.S. should be meddling in foreign affairs. It's really difficult. Balancing anti-interventionalism with respecting human rights in foreign countries can always be difficult. But I can't say that I oppose sanctions because maybe that's something we should consider. We should say, hey, if you're going to be doing these things, we probably shouldn't be helping you or benefiting you in some way. But look, I'm not a politician, I'm not a foreign policy expert, and I don't really know exactly what's going on in China because it's a very, very complicated issue. So I'm going to throw the question to you guys. What do you think about all this? Do you think China is right to intern all of these people? I mentioned I don't because I believe in liberal values. I believe in the rights we enshrined in our constitution. And I think people have a right to practice their religion. But I also understand that China is a very different country and there is a potential for religious extremism. And I don't know enough about it to impose my will on anyone else. But let me know what you think. We'll keep the conversation going. Stay tuned. New videos every day at 4 p.m. And new videos on my second channel, youtube.com slash timcast, starting at 6 p.m. Thanks for hanging out again, and I'll see you all next time.